All right, we continue following major breaking news tonight. There you have live pictures. President Donald Trump at a rally in West Virginia. He's about to take the stage. He's actually on the stage. He's about to uh, take, uh, come up to the microphone. His former lawyer, Michael Cohen, admitted today that he broke campaign finance laws and claims it was at the direction of Donald Trump. Now, the former Trump campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, has been found guilty on eight counts that happened in Virginia this afternoon. Jim DeFiti is with us now. So, Jim, we talked earlier with a former U.S. attorney, David Weinstein, about this all mean what this means legally. So let's talk about what it means politically mm -hmm. now. Local congressman already, Ted Deutsch, is calling for the House Judiciary Committee to hold hearings about Michael Cohen's claim that he basically broke the law at the direction of then-candidate Donald Trump. Yeah, here, here's what's fascinating about this. Because Michael Cohen has now pled guilty, he no longer can assert a Fifth Amendment right not to testify because now that he's guilty he's guilty he, he doesn't have to worry about his words being used against him in court so that means he's liable to be held and dragged in front of a congressional committee now it's more likely to happen if the democrats take back the house than if the republicans do but he can go before a congressional committee and be forced to answer questions he cannot plead the fifth any longer and so that's a major development you're going to hear a lot more from michael cohen whether he's cooperating with the Mueller team or not he's going to have to at some point be cooperating with members of Congress as they try to get answers. Well, we're looking at the president right now live uh, in Charleston, West Virginia. And Jim, I want to ask you about Congress because now the focus is on the House, which is controlled by uh, Republicans, what does this mean as far as the midterm election? So I think a couple of things. Uh, one, it makes uh, the Democratic argument about the need to take back the House so that hearings can be held. I still don't think you're going to hear Democrats running on, we want to impeach the president, because I think that doesn't necessarily play well. But in terms of being able to get to answers, being able to say, you know, if the Republicans refuse to hold a hearing and have Michael Cohen come to testify, that's an argument that Democrats can make about why they need to take back the House. And have Democratic committees, uh, the chairmen of those committees, be able to take control. The other thing, too, that may play a role in this, look, by any standard, today was both exhilarating and exhausting. And there, they, I know there's a lot of feeling that the Trump campaign has tried to put forward and the, and the Republicans that the American people are tired of this scandal. They want to move on. And there's been polling that says they want the Mueller probe to come to an end. There's a flip side to that. There's also an exhaustion factor with the constant controversy surrounding Donald Trump. He has his base. That vote, those voters are always there. But at some point, people are going to say, enough of this. We need to go in a different direction. And there's a recent polling is showing we're on right track, wrong track. A lot of people feel we're on the wrong track. Well, the president is making a point about this not having anything to do with Russian meddling in the election. How do you think that is going to play, especially with his base? Look, it, it, just go through it. It's real simple. You know, you've got you got Trump's Donald Trump's personal attorney has been is now convicted. The campaign chairman convicted. The deputy campaign chairman convicted. His national security advisor, a convicted felon. His, his one of the senior uh, foreign policy guys that he uh, is now a convicted felon. All of these people around him. So yes, it doesn't affect his base, but the totality of it is wearing on people, and we're still getting to the Russia part of it. We still don't know what Mueller has on that. So he campaigned on draining the swamp. This seems awfully swampy. He Hiring the best people. I will hire the best people. And as we just sort of ran through the litany of, thi of, of the people that he's hired, let alone the people that have been forced out of his administration, look, it's hard not to look at this and say this is not one of the, if not the most corrupt administrations we've seen just by an abject standard, by those who have been forced out through ethical standards, those who have been forced to resign, the indictments of sitting members of his, of his inner circle. This is this is corruption at its peak. This is beyond swampy. This is this is the whole new levels of swamp. We're out of time, but do you think he's going to pardon uh, Manafort and Cohen? I think eventually at some point that may, but I, I actually think it blows back worse on him. He'll have to figure out the political calculation of what that means. The damage is already done from Cohen. It's only going to get worse. Okay. All right, Jim. Thank you very much.